Evening guys. <laughs> what a hot day it's been. According to, accord, uh, I'll try again. According to the uh, um, computer in Mum's car, that the uh, temperature around here was hitting 27, 28 degrees. That was probably probably about peak temperature. So, yeah, too hot for me. But according to what I've um, just seen online, that did reach 30 plus degrees in some places. As apparently some railway lines had buckled under the heat. Which I suppose that is um, completely possible. I know um, some of the roads had started to go sticky around here from the heat, as the um, tarmac underneath heated up or the bitumen, whatever it is they use to um, stick them gravelly stone surface down. I don't know. I don't know why they use that surface, you know, when you... That sort of grey stony stuff they stick on a road surface without having to dig up the road, and they put this sort of gooey, tarmac -y bitumen stuff down first. It probably is bitumen or something. And, uh, and roll the stones over top, and then put the signs up saying loose um, 20 miles per hour because of loose chippings. And the cars just sort of roll it in as they run over it. And, well, not just cars, but you know, traffic. <sighs> this will start to peel. It will start to peel out here, actually. Because um, it's all gravel out there, but underneath it is like tarmac, so I don't see the point in that. Um, but there's some bloody great potholes in that car park. Um, anyway. Uh, aside from that, there's a few things I want to quickly, well, try to quickly chat about. You know what my quick chats are like. Um, as far as this goes, I've got to go into a cycle shop at some point. Um, it's called Pedal Revolution, and there's one uh, in Chroma, which isn't too far from me, so when I get a chance, I'll pop in there. Because uh, I asked on a Facebook group, um, North Walsham Velo, it's called, because it's a cycling group based in my town. Um, and someone on there from Pedal Revolution, actually, um, said just pop into, his sh into their shop, because they've got three in Norfolk. Chroma's actually the closest one and bring this with me, both halves obviously, and uh, I'll have a look on their chart, because apparently they've got a chart which lists every last Drelia hanger ever made. And apparently he looked at this and he said apparently this, this type for this bike is still produced, so that'll be good. Um, Depending on the price will depend on whether I order one or two. Um, but, uh, yeah, it depends on price. But that's, that is all that's holding this bike back from being ridden, is that, stu that stupid little piece of metal. But, um, as I said before, I did figure out, you know, that they have to put something like this on an aluminium bike frame, because that's an alloy an alloy frame. It's actually um, seven th um, 7,005 heat treated, whatever that number means, I don't know, but I've seen that on a lot of um, aluminium frames. But, uh, <laughs> it's great, isn't it? I'm so so into my bikes, and I love my bikes, and I love building them, but I don't actually know what that 7,005 heat treated means. I assume it strengthens the aluminium. Um, on steel bike frames that have the same type of dry as that mount on those type of brackets, um, it's all moulded as part of the frame, but I suppose being steel it's a lot stronger, and if you do bend that bracket, you can do what I've done before and straighten it out. But obviously, on an aluminium frame like this, being aluminium, the chances are that it'll snap, and if it doesn't snap, it'll bend, and if you go straighten it, it's going to bend, probably snap when you straighten that back out. So, uh, 
And plus it's a good way to um, charge you lots of money for a new one, because depending where you go and what type of bike you need one for, these little bits of metal can be extremely expensive. I've seen them on some bicycle websites I was looking at when I was trying to find one online. Um, but for some bikes, they were going for £20 a piece. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, quite expensive. Ooh! So I haven't had a chance to do it yet because I ran out of battery yesterday. Let's turn me bollard on and let that heat up. You can see it comes on pretty dim at first, but that's a typical of CFL trait, that is. Comes on dim at first, and then gets brighter. Um, anyway, while it's heating up, what else can I did I want to say? Oh yes, I nearly got taken out on my bike again today on the same junction. Now this particular junction is just over that way. Literally, I don't know, 150 yards, 200 yards ish, something like that. Um, and I have to go that way to get to Sainsbury's. Unless I want to go all the way that way and go around the bloody long way, which is about half a mile, where I can go just zip straight across there. When I say half a mile, it's probably a quarter of a mile going the long way. But still, you know, why would I want to go the long way when I can go the short way? Um, but the problem is, and I'm going to try and explain this as best I can, if um, we pitch me, well, I'm on my bike, right? That way is my bike, I'm looking ahead. And I'm coming up to the junction. We have shop on here, and then a blind corner round to the left. And the cycle lane that I'd be in will then go round to the left as well. The road is one way to traffic coming towards me. And obviously it's um, a two-way road, so we have traffic coming from my right and traffic coming from the left. I come up to go round the corner to stop at the junction, because there's a junction directly round the corner. And some silly sod in a silver Toyota comes round from this way on my side of the road. She cuts the corner. Just as I come the other way and we just missed each other. I think that was more by luck than judgment, to be honest, because I was as far over as I could go. But thankfully, she wasn't hard up against the curb when she cut the corner, otherwise she would have had me. And I'd have been her hood ornament. But um, sadly, that's not the first time that's happened to me on that particular junction. And I know some people are going to say, yeah, but cyclists do this and cyclists do that. Yeah, cyclists aren't perfect either. But... The point is here, I wasn't breaking any road laws, I was using the cycle lane. Because it's actually, that road, for some reason they made that road two way for cyclists, but only one way for cars. Well I know why they made it one way for cars, because at that junction um, it's too narrow to get two cars side by side, and with a lot of vans and other things that you know, drive around town all day doing deliveries and whatnot. It's uh, a bit awkward, so they made it one way. The road actually runs all the way along there. <laughs> and it comes out at the junction here. Well, there is a junction somewhere there first. And then you pull out onto another road, which just comes out across there somewhere I actually put my hand in the right place it's there somewhere <laughs> you know it really is awkward to look through the camera and look well to sort of get everything lined up because you've got to look through the camera then you've got to look away from the camera and make sure your hand is actually in the right place I don't know maybe it's just me being awkward I don't know <laughs> it could just be me being awkward <sighs> right but yeah, that has happened more than once to me. And what actually worries me is... I mean, I'm... No offence to older folk, but... Being my age and being my build... And having been clobbered by cars before and got up and walked away with... Not so much as a bruise... 
Well, actually, I did bruise, but they don't show on me. They tend to be hidden bruises, if that make any sense. I feel them rather than feel them and see them. They don't show. But, uh, so I'm not too worried about myself being hit, because the chances are me being me will just probably get up and walk away. <laughs> be like a stunt man. Um, but what worries me is there's a lot of kids that walk on that path there, and it is quite narrow. And there's a lot of people in mobility scooters that use that cycle path as well because it's a lot easier. Again, because the path is actually too far too narrow for pedestrians and mobility scooters. And it is like one of the main paths and main roads in town, so it does get used by a lot. It is quite busy throughout the day. Um... But it just worries me that someone's going to cut that corner, thinking, oh, that's a one-way street, no one's going to be coming the other way, and end up taking out a child on a bike going around that corner, taking out me, taking out someone on a mobility scooter. You know, it's going to happen. And I keep mentioning it on the town council website. I'm going to keep mentioning it until they get so pissed off that they will nag the highway agency to do something. But the chances are, as always, nothing will get done until someone is taken out on that corner. Even though I think everyone knows that it's it's coming, unfortunately. It's going to happen. I can see it happen. I don't know when. Mm. You know, I actually prefer chilled Cokes in a can. It's cheaper to buy a two-litre bottle... A uh, two litre bottle is 55p of um, the Buy Sainsbury's Cola. Um, so I can get four litres for £1.10. But um, for a pack of eight of these, which are 330ml per can, I don't know how many millilitres it is to a litre. So I don't know if that's like the equivalent of a two litre bottle. I don't know. Oh, cheers, Nemo. You've got hair on this, and I've got hair in the back of my throat. Oh, well. Um, but a pack of eight of these cans is two pounds, which isn't a lot for a pack of eight cans, is it? But you know, I think you'll find you still get more for your money if you get two two-litre bottles. But I find these cans actually chill better and come out the fridge a lot colder. Probably because I believe metal is a better temperature conductor, if that would make sense. <laughs> you know, obviously that's, well, one of the reasons they use metal in pans. It conducts heat pretty well, but I suppose metal can work in the opposite way and conduct the cold pretty well, but I don't know. I could just be chatting complete bollocks. I don't know. It's just to me that metal cat drink cans come out of a fridge colder than a plastic bottle. Anyway, I'll sit the can on there. Whee! It's actually quite bright, isn't it, when I've got the light off? I actually sat here last night just like this. Like I said, I couldn't do a video on it last night. Because um, I ran out of battery and I didn't have them charged. Because Pillock here forgot to put the batteries on charge. <laughs> By the time they had charged, well, no, actually, I think they finished charging this morning. I turned them off at about 11 o'clock this morning. I've got two more good ones in there, and these ones are still good, so... Um, yeah, it's actually quite a nice, bright little lamp up the corner. Well, I say little lamp, it's actually quite a large lamp. <laughs> like I said, you know... I've made use of it. It's not going to go down the dump and be chucked into a landfill site now, is it? You can tell it's had quite a hard life on the road because of uh, all the scuffs. And like I said, they're changing the um, style in town now. They're using a different one. So, I'll probably be a collector's piece if I keep hold of it. It was so simple to turn it into a lamp. As you saw, or as 
Yeah, as you saw in my uh, previous videos. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Yeah, I've brought a few more, or a couple more of those tubs, I should say, not a few more. So I've got getting there with me Lego. It's probably one of my main hobbies. And I do, I just like to tinker with electrics. You know, I've got my soldering iron there and make the lamp. I can do simple things. Duh. Oh, pardon me. Deary me. Where'd that come from? Because <laughs> of this heat wave. I watched something that would be a bit of a less strain on the electric. So uh, I bought this little desk fan. And as my friend said, you know, I said a mains fan like that is going to be um, a bit more of a power hog than this little um, USB fan I bought. No, because it can't draw much more than one amp. Because uh, I do believe that's what the USB 2 sockets are. Um, and it does actually warn you on the pack to make sure the switch is off on the back of this fan before plugging it in. Otherwise, I assume you'd get a power surge if you plugged it in while the fan was on, and that would probably blow your USB port. Um, it's, they did a cheaper one. This was £3.99. And it's got a metal cage and a metal stand. And they did a cheaper one at 2 99 which was all plastic. And I thought, mm, I know how clumsy I can be, so I'd rather have something a bit more robust. So I um, bought this. I think it might even have metal fins. I'm not sure. They look metal. Because they're nice and shiny, but see, you can see them shining in the light there. But uh, I might just be painted plastic. I actually haven't gotten in there and had a look yet. But yeah, it's a de these are decent little fans. You can just sit them on your desk there. They don't make um, don't make a lot of space. Don't take up a lot of space. And they're uh, pretty cheap. <laughs> um, my friend on here that I'm talking to actually said, you know, they're probably not as efficient with the amount of air they blow through. No, that one does blow through more air, and I can have that further away like that, but one of these sitting on the desk as it is there, I'm feeling a nice breeze coming off of it, so at close range as it's designed to as it's designed for, it's um, all right to me. I suppose the plastic one would be just as powerful, but uh, I just decided to opt. As this was only one pound more, I just decided to uh, opt for it. It's um, from QD Stores, if you're wondering. And it's um, from the Fine Elements range, which do pedestal fans and desk fans, like that one or that size. And they do the um, tower fans. They do quite a range. The prices aren't bad. I mean, I could get a pedestal one to replace. Well, I am actually tempted. Because, uh, although my one over there does work, it's, um, seen better days. I mean, the, uh, oscillate mechanism broke, so I took that out. Because it was actually restricting the, um, spin on the blades. And if we turn it on, it doesn't come up to full speed straight away. I've got to actually let it sit there and let the motor get hot, and then that will gradually spin up to speed. So it does still work, and it does for now, but it is, well, as you can see, it's getting a bit worn. But a uh, brand new one's going to cost me 14 99 so I thought, hmm, I may get a new one before that one decides to uh, cop it. <laughs> yeah, look at this. So slow it is. That's on the fastest speed at the moment. That will get faster if I leave it. I'm going to turn it on anyway so that can be cooling off the bed. Oh, I hate the heat. It's actually cooler. It's actually quite cool here for some reason. There just seems to be a lot of a cool air in this area of the flat. 
I'll just I'll sleep out here in the hallway, I think, because I hate trying to sleep in the heat. Me and heat do not mix. Right, well I've hit my 20 minute mark, which is the length I wanted to keep to on these vlogs when I do them. I'm going to try to do less vlogs and try to, you know, do some something with content. I haven't really got a lot at the moment I can do. There's nothing to take apart. I haven't been to any car boots for the last couple of weeks, mainly due to the weather. Uh, I should be going to Mum's tomorrow. I'm going to take that bloody sack barrel wheel with me. Try and fix the friggin' puncture in it. I'm failing that hope that tube I've got over there will fit. If not, I'm just going to, I don't know, Take a friggin' hammer to it and tell him to scrap the bleeding sack barrel because it's doing my head in. <laughs> nah, I'm sure I can find a way to fix it. Uh, I can't do any more to the bike. Well, unless I decide to uh, sit here and set the brakes up and change the handlebar stem and get the rear reflector on. I've got the bolts out to change these. Less rusty ones, where are they? They're on a pile there, I just hope they fit. I think I figured out I need six. What the real daft thing is, even though you can't fit a um, baggage carrier on this because of that um, disc brake, well you could if you put one of those um, seat post mounted ones on, which I don't think are actually that strong. Um, it's got the mountain brackets up here to put one on. I'm going to take these out, hopefully, and uh, change them for some nice shiny ones. Attention to detail. I'm nuts. I forgot to get some steel wool today. Oh well. I don't need it right this minute. But apart from adjusting the brakes, you know, I can't. Don't need, well, I can't adjust any of the gears at the moment because one, I haven't got a chain on it, and two, I haven't got the rear derailleur on it. I don't think the gears, well the rear gears are going to need adjusting because I've had to disconnect the cable. But I don't think the front gears do. I do believe the front gears will um, function perfectly fine as they are. So, yeah. Just, uh, see if I can mount that rear light in a better place. Perhaps down on the rear fork. Yeah, anyway, I'm going over my time now. So, uh, I'm going to say thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. So, uh, bye.